So it's a little interesting that the secret to this Oscar-nominated editor's work is actually not cutting. And letting shots like this play out. Because if you cut the load, it doesn't make sense. It's the non-edit situation and let the code of the scene be transmitted. No, you don't need to cut. To talk about this advanced editing discipline, we're bringing back the longtime editor of acclaimed director Yorgos Lanthimos, who made masterpieces like The Lobster, The Favorite, Poor Things, and most recently, Kinds of Kindness. In this in-depth masterclass interview, we explore how to use time as an editing narrative tool, how to hold on a shot that we don't want to see, yet make us beg for it, and how Yorgos uses music like a metronome, giving him license to let music determine the movie's cuts and his actors' performances. This is the Editing Podcast, brought to you by Movie. If you're new here, please subscribe. Hi. Oh, hi, my darling. Sophie, why is it so important to be holding on to this shot? It's definitely an iconic shot, right? It's the, the shot where mm. something ordinary happens. The frame is perfect. The bright situation in her kitchen and she being dark and entering from the right. He presents a threat, right? You don't need to intercut these shots for the dialogue and see him saying, Hi. He has to be a threat. Oh, hi, my darling. I just went to the store. I got some wonderful tomatoes and some beef tenderloin. I ran into Tammy and Kate. Tammy said they're really missing you at work. I'm hungry. So you did have other options, but you chose that this is the one to hold on to the most. The code has to be very clear. It's the non-edit situation and let the, the code of the scene be transmitted. You, know, you don't need to cut. Well, it's, it's a classic less is more. The editor, Jake Roberts, who edited Civil War in the next Alien movie, he feels like some editors are paid by the cut. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's, I, it's, I very much agree on that, yes. Because if you cut the load, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't contain the code of the shot as the director demands it yeah. for you to edit it in a proper manner without destroying the situation somehow. And then also just like him coming in to that framing, what is quite an ordinary shot, suddenly turning into something quite horrific, quite quickly. So much story is told just with that one shot and you simply not cutting, letting the shot speak for itself. I'm hungry. And then the music informs, okay, what is going to eat now? With the beef filet I just bought, or some spaghetti, or some salmon in the freezer, is it? Fish or meat you want? Meat. So you see here as well the rhythm is... Here? Is it fish or meat you want? Club, shut in the door. Meat. Wonderful. Down. Oh, wait. Sweetheart. Mm. I want you to chop one of your fingers off, cook it with cauliflower, and bring it to me to eat. Or your thumb, maybe, I, whatever you think is best. That's what I want. Can you do that for me? Just, just a small movement of him going forward before we cut to this situation. So the edit is very simple. This shot, his mm. medium shot, and then her medium shot. Just three shots. But it's simple and clean. It's effective. That's what I want. Can you do that for me? The, the music informs that, okay, this is the end of this scene. She heard that. Now mm. we go into her situation. What will she do about it? It's using time of the music to also help you make those cuts. But it is such big skips in time. I believe we had to be ahead of the viewer at these moments. That's why we made the cuts a bit fast. Take by surprise the audience and not build the lot on that decision and go faster to the making of the choice and cutting your finger. Oh. 
Ah, I start to wince away for this. I, I... Yeah, because it does create a moment of tension here. <laughs> and then, on this edit, we spent a lot of time. And, and actually, that was when Emily came to Athens to watch the cut. She suggested that we stay longer because we had an intercut between her face, cut on her finger, again her face, and the end of the finger. But then she suggested to use a close-up to say the whole thing and, you know, maybe present the, the cut later. As a matter of fact, she was absolutely right. When we did this cut, mm. we were both amazed because you see that mm. happening or you imagine it happening on her face. <laughs> But yeah, staying on is so much more impactful. Ah. <laughs> and then when you don't expect it, actually, it comes like, you know. <laughs> I don't even want to pause on it. I can't, yeah, right. I can't look at it. <laughs> ah. I, I'm getting squirmish just looking at this, even just thinking about it. Ugh. was at the screening in, in, in Athens uh, a week ago. One person uh, collapsed and <laughs> had to open the, you know, the lights. It's true, after the finger. He was very upset and he just uh, lost consciousness and it meant that this, the situation <laughs> worked a lot on, on a visceral level. Well, I feel bad because it means that the scene worked, <laughs> that you made right, someone faint. Right. It does, right, right. <laughs> I feel I, laughing at that though. Then, of course, the music continues the same rhythm, but different chords, more aggressive and more grave, making the idea come more to our mind somehow. Okay, she did it, and what is going to happen next? But then it continues. Because she cooks a finger. We come to this place for magic. We come to movie, to laugh, to cry, to care. Because we need that. All of us. <laughs> MUBI is the streaming service to watch the works of iconic directors and emerging auteurs from all around the world. If you're watching this episode, you're probably a fan of Yorgos Lanthimos. And you can watch his absurdist short film Nimic now exclusively on movie. So I've recently been diving into the work of today's greatest auteurs, like Luca Guadagnino's short film, The Staggering Girl, and Park Chan-wook's latest masterwork, the romantic thriller, Decision to Leave. It's films like that that inspire me. So yes, heartbreak feels good in a place like this, in movie. You can try movie free for 30 days at movie.com slash the editing podcast for a whole month of great cinema for free. One of the actual most interesting things that I got out of watching that film was using time as an interesting uh, narrative tool. The way I like to describing it is you had like four to five different scenes, all chronologically, they're all like completely separately. But it looks like we were using time in a way to have all of those scenes kind of weave between each other. What I'm asking is like, what was your relationship with using time as a narrative tool in this movie? Well, time is, that's a very interesting subject on its own because we're always in time, right? And the film, it's always in the present time, right? What mm. you see, it's happening right there, but then, you have to try to expand it somehow and, you know, like concentric circles going around and come back to the same theme. So, so it's the themes that repeatedly come into the movie. You come back to them, it expands your vision of time somehow and it makes your experience more, let's say, deeper in a sense. So all these feelings of time, filmmakers do take advantage of them to immerse the, the, the viewer in the timeline of the film. They took the racket. What did you say? Raymond came in during the night while we were sleeping and took the racket. That's so strange. Who could have taken the racket? This is a typical Jesse Plemons look. <laughs> you know, 
he has all these mm. things inside him. He just wants to erupt, and then he controls it and says all his lines in a very controlled manner. I could assume you could trust you had such a great performance every single take, and you're like, I, I, don't know what, I don't know what take to choose. All of this is amazing. How were you able to be supporting Jesse's performances? When you have a being like Jesse Plemons, there are certain characteristics mm. that are very peculiar to him. He is not to the performance as per se, but to his being, which is not a performance to me. It's like being there, being that person in that situation without pretending that I am that person. That's the truth that I'm looking for. The difference between a performance and being. <laughs> yes. That's a very fascinating way of like what you're looking for. That's so strange. We could have taken the racket. The alarm didn't go off. I'm calling the police. Raymond knows the code, darling. It was important for this or not to be in the cut with the actor saying her lines. We had to stay on his face. The alarm didn't go off. To take all this tension and... I'm calling the police. Raymond knows the code, darling. Then it starts. To be precise, he picked the code out himself. You didn't know that. We don't even cut to her. We cut directly to his narration. It's not discussion about two people. It's about what he has inside of him and how he will express it. What explains also their relation and his uh, control in him. And 1962, the year he was born. And there's more. The two of us are together because that's what he decided. That night in Cheval, he picked you out for me. He saw you sitting there on your own, and he told me to go over and flirt with you. I liked you a lot, too. Don't get me wrong, but he made me do it. He suggested I make it seem like an accident, he told me to pretend I had hurt my hand to get us talking. The notes and the flowers I sent you, he wrote those. He picked out this house. These stools, he picked out this row. Robert, you need to be heading to the office. I'm not done yet. When black and white comes, it expresses, first of all, all this power situation. When we see mm. Raymond for the first time, and then how Robert behaves towards Raymond, how subordinate it is for him, how he makes fun of the situation, how he orders him to do things. There's one last thing. I never told you this before, and it's... It's terrible what I'm about to tell you. I know that, but you need to hear it. The reason we never managed to have a child all these years is not because you couldn't. It's because, it's because Raymond was secretly paying doctors to mess things up. Those weren't miscarriages, Sarah, they were abortions. As soon as we cut to the close-up of that, I instantly knew the implication. What, why was it so important for you for the audiences to make that connection first and we're not doing it in her perspective? They have to know somehow the situation or suspect that there's something that he puts in her drink. Because if you go a bit further, you will see her reaction. The reason we never managed to have a child all these years is not because you couldn't. See this cut between the past and the present. Like, she hears him now. Although that's not true, but yeah. we make this connection and then, you know, it touches to the graveness of the situation when she cries. So that doesn't come from her reaction in the present when she hears about it, but it is created through these three images. These different shows and the, the way they cut, they put the situation in the viewer's mind. Her crying is not only about believing that she had an abortion, her cry or her tears yeah. is about her in the, in the now realizing this is what happened to me. So this is even more of uh, using time as that narrative tool where like essentially all of these timelines are having a conversation with yes, each other. Right. That's quite powerful. I like that a lot. All right, I bet you $20. Actually, you know what? $50 that you're a filmmaker. And yes, content creators 
and editors are filmmakers too. And the reason why I bring this up is because I have been talking to my friends at Musicbed and they've brought back their filmmaking competition, the Musicbed Challenge. It's a 30 day short film competition where you can make a narrative short, a documentary short, or a spec commercial. And you can get in the run to win prizes, industry recognition, but most importantly, bragging rights. So that piece of content or that short film we've been wanting to make, well, you don't have that excuse anymore. This is when you make it. And I will be part of the judging panel. And Musicbed will even give you access to their entire selection of music to use in your submission. Seriously, their entire library is fantastic. Some of the best work I've ever made has been because of Musicbed. I'm really grateful for them. And actually it's really cool. I think that music is actually really fantastic because you can do some really, really cool, amazing cinematic stuff. It's definitely worth it. So get the camera rolling and the timeline flowing. <laughs> That line's terrible. <laughs> yeah, the deadline to submit is August 15th. Use the link in the description to get the music bed starter kit. Thanks for listening. Let's get back to the conversation. I make it seem like an accident. Told me to pretend I had hurt my hand to get us talking. The notes and the flowers I sent you, he wrote those. He picked out this house, these stools, he picked out- And also this. I like this uh, juxtaposition between her being happy, taking the flower in the mm. black and white, and being very upset in the present time. It's a nice contrast because they, they're facing each other, not on the same direction. So it creates a nice uh, graphic uh, situation, I believe. It's like a cross, the absolute contrasting, aggressive change in emotion. Now that you pointed it out, that's one of those details that you feel, but I didn't notice mm -hmm. until you pointed it out. That's very powerful, I love it. Of course, I don't expect a viewer to understand all this consciously when he watches it, but I know that when he watches, he will go through an experience. This is the aim. Well, th that's the power of the editing. We have all of these creative intents and these creative uh, choices that we can explain and you can like tell me and things like that, and it's exciting. Mm -hmm. But I didn't notice any of these details. Like, I only noticed it now that you're pointing it out, but I felt it. And that's the one of the biggest things that we try to do as editors. We know for a fact that our intent's never gonna be explicitly said, but we need to make sure that the audiences feel the emotion that we're trying to create. And it is, a lot of it is just compounded and just all of these small creative choices that compound into that type of expression, that type of feeling. In the same way you have a poor thing, like you had a lot of the rhythm of the piano. You had the rhythm of the monologue. 1962 is the year he was born, and there's more. And so you're able to use all of that to then essentially then build this sequence together. Like, tell me, having all of that in your arsenal, how were you able to then create that rhythm? We have to start bottom up. I edited the scene without putting the black and white pictures to find the best performances, to know what I needed mm -hmm. from Jesse or from his uh, from his wife. And then at certain moments, I started adding the black and white material. And when that was somehow constructed in a way, or of course longer, then the music could make that even better in a sense, or give it the proper rhythm and the, pro the proper poses as well for us to understand what's happening. It was a mm. very difficult scene in a sense, but very rewarding in a sense. The amount of editors I've seen come in, find the music track first, and then they edit to the music. You're like, no, make sure the story is there first. The one thing that you said that I really wanted to touch more on of like how everything is connected and how you were able to have all of these elements of the movie be connecting with each other, even though it's like three different stories, like how can they all be talking to each other? What is something that you're doing 20 minutes into the film that might be informing something like an hour later? Yeah, that comes from uh, Zika Bertov's idea of motifs, like some things are repeated. Yeah. When you hear them second time, your knowledge or your feeling about them is informed by what you've seen before so your understanding of that motif grows bigger like for example we had this punctuation of the piano it's like a metronome i liked you a lot too don't get me wrong but he made me do it that same thing is happening with the finger because in the first situation uh, robert could create abortion situation for his wife for the love of Raymond. Mm -hmm. The same situation, mm -hmm. in a sense, is when she w is willing to cut her fingers to prove her love to him. Although it is the same motif, it is expanded in the second situation. And it's expanded more in the third situation when, you know, one of the sisters jumps in into the pool. So 
she wants mm-hmm. to prove that her sister is that, that so is willing to sacrifice her life again. So all these motifs in the end make you connect these stories not in a descriptive way not in an explicit way but somehow you know to make the connections yourself and to find uh, your own way through them and i hope it will give you the ability to put your own thoughts or feelings about it that's what i like about yeah. his films questioning and putting the audience and putting the viewer to the situation to respond somehow that's fantastic details wow yogas this is a great conversation yeah again you've helped me learn a lot definitely keep doing impl- implementing this in the work that i'm doing so yogas thank you so much again for your time thank you so much thank you so much for calling me and i'm sure you have your time to be editing a great film in the future I'm sure of that. I really hope so. Thank you so much for that. It's really encouraging. Thank you so much. Thank you.